so we better be quick. Um, my name is uh, Dimitris Andriadis. I'm um, managing the extended Quarkus team at Red Hat. And before that, I was involved with the application server project for 15 plus years. Um, who has heard of Quarkus? Yeah, good. So, okay, Quarkus is a cloud native stack for writing uh, microservices and serverless apps, just to be quick. And Quarkus loves microprofile. Um, Quarkus is based essentially on Eclipse microprofile, so we use microprofile as the base model on top of which anything else plugs in onto Quarkus. We use CDI and we implement microprofile version 3. Uh, we're just passing the, the last bits of the TCK. Now, um, Quarkus as a community project started, well, it was announced a bit less than eight months ago, not far from here. Uh, it was an extended team at Red Hat that created Quarkus. And this team trying to answer the problem, what is the best way to write cloud native applications in, in Java. And if you see how things have evolved, going from monolith to microservices to serverless, you'll notice that uh, the deployment model for Java is changing. And we come to a point where density matters more and more as you go to microservices and especially uh, serverless. And Java is not a very good fit for these environments because of the overhead of the virtual machine itself. So um, Enterprise Java was created at the time where we assume that we have full control of the hardware, lots of memory, lots of CPU, uh, and it was optimized in this environment. And it, work, it works great, but it's not so competitive. Um, in cloud deployment, so you see a lot of Node.js usage, Go, and so on. So we, we've been looking for solutions at Red Hat and from many different directions. So from the side of the standards, uh, Red Hat um, founded with other uh, partners Eclipse MicroProfile to modular, modularize Java and make it uh, appropriate for cloud. Uh, on the application server side, we're looking at different ways to you know, modularize the server, make it smaller, faster. There was a, a project at Red Hat GCJ that um, got into ahead of time compilation. Long time ago, it was a bit ahead of its time. And things at OpenJDK team, they were looking at improvements on different levels. But none of those was um, you know, important enough to make a real dent into making Java really sexy for, for the cloud. And the fundamental problem is that most frameworks um, suffer from uh, the fact that they load too many classes. They are very dynamic, very reflective. They do a lot of initialization, which on one side, this is what gives power to, to Java. On the other side, that doesn't fit very, very well with, uh, with this new immutable cloud uh, age. So, so if you look at what the typical framework will do, let's say hibernate, when they start up, they will bootstrap themselves, introduce dependencies, a lot of, do a lot of parsing, XML, properties file, look at the class path, annotation discovery. They will build some sort of meta model in memory so they know what they have to, be, to do. So in order to be able to go and create those runtime objects required to run the application and then start. So you can think of it like these final two steps are the desired final state. So the idea is, what if we can go directly to this desired final state 
and skip everything else, and leave everything else for, uh, for the build time. And that's, that's the basic idea behind, behind Quarkus. So Quarkus tries to do most or almost all of the work it can possibly do at, at build time uh, and do it once. So we do that build time and then we don't have to pay the price every time we start your application. Uh, we don't have to load all the, that bootstrap code, so less classes, less memory, less reflection, uh, and that leads to a smaller and faster application. So to do that, Quarkus introduces some extra step in the build process, so you build your, you compile your Java classes, and then Quarkus kicks in to do its magic, uh, and perform this, what we call, augmentation phase. And this is the phase where we try to figure out how to do all the initialization at build time, and then generate the bytecode that will go into the end, uh, you know, up. So the end result of Quarkus is really a, an ordinary Java application, uh, but we only include those pieces necessary to start the app at runtime. We do a lot of work at build time. Now, it just so happens that when you start from this super optimized Java uh, application, this becomes very interesting to any type of uh, ahead of time native compilation you might want to do. So currently we have a, let's say, backend that can use uh, the Graal native compiler uh, to produce native images, and, and those are super optimized as well because they start from this very optimized Java uh, image. And for Quarkus to do that, we have an architecture that has a basis runtime, and then we have extensions for the, the various frameworks we bring into Quarkus. So for Hibernate, we'll have a Hibernate extension, and the Quarkus framework will drive the extension to tell Quarkus what it is that it has to do. So the extension will go and find out all the this desired final state for Quarkus to include in the end application. Uh, we offer lots of extensions, and we we want the ecosystem, the Quarkus ecosystem, the Quarkus universe to provide more extensions for popular frameworks. Uh, so no, normally it will be the framework provider that will uh, submit uh, extensions to, to Quarkus. So what's the end result? So how, how fast is fast or, or small? So as a very rough rule of thumb, when you Quarkify in a Java application, you are expected to um, to see a, um, a re memory reduction to about half. So if it used to take one gigabyte with, you know, the standard popular ways you write Java today, you, you reduce down to, to half a gig. And boot time will go like five times faster. So that's a very rough rule of thumb that we see, you know, um, happening. And when you go native, things are even more interesting. Uh, memory consumption falls about five times, and boot time, can, you can see it increase by 50 times or even 100 times, depending on, on your app. So those are very impressive uh, uh, savings you, you're gonna see. Now, um, the, some people often think about Quarkus being a AOT enabling framework, but Quarkus works very well on, on Hotspot. So it's your decision how you want to deploy your applications. It's quite fine to deploy on, on standard JVM uh, when you have longer running applications with more memory and there you will see the best raw performance. The JVM is super optimized, has very advanced garbage collectors, memory um, management, and then you can use the, the full of the Java 
uh, tooling ecosystem. Now, if density is really the important factor, then you can look at the native side where um, you can get more raw performance with more instances, you know, five times the, the number of instances you normally have with Java, uh, and very quick startup times in terms of milliseconds. So this naturally leads to serverless deployments as well. Um, Let's go do a quick demo. Um, I'm starting out from, from scratch. Um, and to start with Quarkus, you normally go to the website. We have a very nice uh, tutorials. Um, this is the last Quarkus release that came up last night, actually. I hope it's stable. And I'll use the archetype to craft a simple uh, application. And let's make it just a, a small microservice with a REST endpoint, accept the defaults. And that should do it. That should be a very simple um, Quarks application. It, And if you look at the what's been produced, we have the usual uh, executable in, in, in Java. You can start like this. And it can start in, you know, dot eight seconds, even on this very old uh, lap laptop. It's a four year laptop. My boss doesn't buy a new one. So it should be up there. Yeah, so Quark is running. Now Quark comes with this very interesting mode. We call it dev mode. That pretty much starts Quark in the background. Well, if I write it properly. And if I go in the IDE, there should be a te you know a basic resource. I think you should be able to see it. So there's a basic you know REST resource. You, you see all of that is standard, you know Java E now Jakarta. E. There's no anything quark specific in there and there should be a hello resource endpoint yeah sorry so this is running and the normal way you develop with quarkus is you go there and you just make changes so uh, Let's change that, go back to the browser, refresh, and should be there. Let's do it again, save, refresh, and, and it's there. So how does that work? Um, when you're in dev mode, Quarkus uh, will intercept the request as it comes in, and then it will look in the file system, and if there's a change, it's going to compile it. So recompile, stop the server, start the server, and that's it. And because it's so fast, it happens in sub subsecond times. You don't even see you don't see see it happening. And then even if you make a mistake, let's say I forget this, I should get I'm getting an error. So it's like you it's like you code in JavaScript, but it's just ordinary Java. So that's that's quite nice. And since we're doing micro profile, you can use the 
the usual um, microprofile tricks. So let's oops, take this out and make a uh, let's say config property. Creating find it yeah this one help me out here <laughs> Should be here, no? Maybe I'm not connected. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. So you can use standard microprofile constructs like uh, configuration API. We have a application properties file where we keep all configuration. This can map to, uh, to uh, Kubernetes maps in the background, databases, and so on. And those are dynamically reloaded. So whenever you refresh, Quarkus will see the changes in resources, recompile, stop, start, and, and it's there. Now, the way you continue with Quarkus is you, you, you look at your extension. So if I go to the code Quarkus IO website, it's here, there's a, you know, the usual starter thing where you see all available extensions. We offer quite a few, and we accept, expect the community to add, add even more. Um, but you can also see it on the command line. So Quarkus, Quarkus list extensions. So you can here you can see what's available. Now all this small rice stuff. This is really our microprofile implementation. So you can, you know, pick up one of those extensions. So for example, let's add, you know, metrics and Quarkus add extension. And maybe also health, see that works. Yeah, so we've added two extensions. And I will recompile and just re-enter dev mode. All right, so I'm back to my resource. And since now I've, I've added uh, those extensions, those should be immediately available. So if I go to see 
metrics. Those are the metrics, and those are broken up by base metrics and vendor specific ones, and then application. But there's no application metric, so if I want to just add the simple one, I could go there and say, let's say, count it. I want to count how many invocations go into my uh, endpoint. Let's see if that works. Yeah, oop, nope. Metric. Oh, yeah. It should be there, yeah. So that's how, how you can add very quickly. Uh, and if I call my endpoint a few times, then this counter should go up. So three invocations. Uh, you can add the text, description. Let's see if it's there. Yeah. So like so, you know, you continue with that. Um, you can also add simple uh, health checks and micro profile has a liveness and readiness health check so those should be different URLs here live and ready and maybe I have just enough time to add a simple health check here uh, so I'll check. Yep. Yeah. Something like that. So let's say we want a readiness. I'll check. And let's try to build it up here. So. You can say that, let's say, we're down because um, you can give a, some reason for being down. So let's say uh, cause. We're down because there's no database. And then we just build this. And hope it works. Let's see. Yeah, so we're down because there's no database. So that's how you develop with Quarkus. I hope you got a quick idea. And when, let's say, you are done, the, the Quarkus premise is that whatever you do, if you use uh, our um, extensions, you should be able to just uh, con convert into native by using the native profile, minus P. And that will kick in a different phase where we call out to Growl to do the build. And maybe that will give me some time to go back to my slides. Um, so just to, to recap, um, building with Quarkus will give you uh, a lot of speed improvements. That's a, a REST api a application with CRUD, so it's not like a, a toy hello world. And you can see how this can be reduced to about you know half of the size 
a fifth of time when, when running on, on standard VM and much faster when run on native. Developer joy, what we want to have with this mode where you're developing the ID, you save, uh, you immediately see the, the changes happening. We have very simple configuration uh, in one file, everything, all the properties are there. We want Quarkus to work on the majority of, of cases easily um, and, you know, make, make development joy for you, basically. Something I didn't mention at all, uh, for pretty much most of the APIs on Quarkus, we offer reactive alternatives. So Quarkus is built on a reactive core. At the very core of Quarkus, we have Vertex. So uh, all the HTTP processing is shared with the same resources. So, so it, it's, it's going to be very, very effective. Um, and you will see more coming out uh, from the reactive front uh, with Quarkus. And we should mention that Quarkus is both new and old. So all the frameworks, you see the standards, uh, those are trusted technologies developed for, you know, 10, 15 years. What we add is, you know, a lot of Quarkus dust on top and those extensions to enable this, those build time optimizations. And to learn more, go to the Quarkus website. My compilation step, oh, it's just finished. Uh, so I should have... Um, sorry. Now I, sh I have this executable, uh, 23 megabytes. Um, uh, it's a native image, so let's try to start it. Yeah. And again, this is my slow laptop. 14 uh, milliseconds. And it should, you know, work like the Java app. If I go there, those should be there. Healthiness. Um, my endpoint is there. Metrics should be working. So it's all there. And I think that concludes. Maybe we have also five minutes for questions, maybe. Any questions? Well, it's very simple actually. It just checks the file system to see if there's any change. If there's any change in the class files, in the Java files, it will recompile it. So, so yes. The, the hot reload is really a hot reload of, of the whole app, the whole server. We don't dynamically change classes or anything like that. Because it's so fast, we, we can do it. We don't have to do any other tricks. We reload the, the whole server. <laughs> I can't hear you, Heiko. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you. Uh, we offer also a, a Docker image that lets you cross build for another architecture, basically for for Linux. Yeah. But this is a native Mac image. All right, so thanks very much. We'll be around. If you have any questions, let us know. Thank you very much. <laughs>